Hi folks, today I'm going to talk about developing Java applications using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Gorka Marjan. I work for Red Hat on developer tooling. I do several things including Java language server, hybrid mobile tooling, uh, Eclipse J and, and whatnot. Let's first start by looking at what is Visual Studio Code. If you look at the developer tooling space, Visual Studio Code kind of goes around between an IDE and a text editor. It actually brands itself as a code editor. So you can still do your coding. It's not as established full IDE. So let's do a demo of, of what I mean by that. Starting my VS Code uh, with my VS Code Java demo project. As you can see, this is a Maven-based project which is using Spring Boot under the need. Uh, let's go in and start a, take a look at a Java file. And once you open this Java file, the first thing that, one thing that you will notice is it actually starts to give you code assist and, and hover support. So uh, for those of you who are not very familiar with VS Code, uh, VS Code is a very versatile editor. Um, it is very responsive. Um, and what we do with VS Code Java extension is we are actually using a Java language server and integrate that with Visual Studio Code. Therefore, we can actually get code assist and uh, other Java language uh, functionality. So let me go in and just type in. So um, we, what are the, the features that we support on VS Code? We support obviously the, the code assist for it. Uh, we support hover. Um, we do have some, a bit of, well of course we support uh, uh, compiling compiler errors. Uh, we do have a bit of code refactoring. Oh, this one is an interaction. This is something called code lenses on Visual Studio Code. And through the code lenses, you can actually see, for instance, this, this code lens uh, tells me how many implementations of this interface exist. And if I just click on it, it, it shows me the list of interfaces. And if I go here, I can directly go here and, oh, it, it tells me that there is a problem with it. And then if I click here, oh, there are me methods that hasn't been implemented on this class. And I can just tell it to implement those. So as you can see, we can do uh, code lenses, we can do code assist, we can do uh, refactoring. Um, let me show you a few other refactorings that we have. Uh, for instance, if I go here and invoke it will just insert the missing code for me. Um, things like that, um, small things. You can organize, of course, uh, your, um, let's go here and just do an import. Um, yeah, so, So what I can do here is I can actually, uh, let me just import something that is. So what this can do is it can organize my imports for me as well, uh, as you would expect on a real, um, on, a, on a typical Java IDE. Uh, another um, feature that we support is we can format the whole document or let me just break it a bit.
Oh, right now it's on auto format there. <laughs> yeah, so, but when you don't have the auto format on, you can actually uh, invoke the format and it, can, it will format it for you. But auto format is also another feature that was support. And if you are, uh, if you're interested in seeing the outline, you can see it from here. And if you want to do a search, um, let's search for message, for instance. Uh, and it can take you directly to that class. And if you want to just browse around the classes, you can do that as well. Let's go to the string, comparable. <laughs> ah, yeah, sure. Hmm. Yeah, you can you can go around uh, browsing Java classes with it, or class files with it. Uh, one thing that it will do is it will uh, discover your uh, dependencies through Maven file if you have one and download the source code for it, and it will provide content assist and, and documentation through uh, your Maven. We support Maven and Gradle projects, so if you have a Gradle project, you can actually um, use that as well. Uh, another feature that has been recently added is you can do, do debugging. Uh, so for that, let me just go to my settings here. Um, so I have a task, and a task on VS Code is a way to run a command line. So what I'll do is I'll just run a task for running this application. Um, This is just running it. Let's kill this one. I think I have a better one here. Let me just switch to another project that will make go faster. All right, so this is a Vertex project. Um, what I'll do is I will go to my task JSON. So the, the big difference is I added a debug task here, which will uh, allow me to run my word tax on debug mode. So what this will essentially do is uh, it will run the task and uh, open the, f the debug port on port 5005 by default. Uh, you can configure that. And if I go to my launch.json, and launch.json, if you're familiar with Eclipse, uh, is your launch config, in, is the cool into launch configurations. Um, on my launch.json, I'm gonna say, uh, I wanna do a debug attach to localhost at port 5005. So my Vertex application is running. At this point, I should be able to just go to and invoke my application. So now let's try to debug it. Let's see if I can find a good place to put a breakpoint. Yep. Let's go back here, add Java 1 and invoke. Oh, 
all of a sudden I'm on my um, debugger, uh, my, I hit my breakpoint, and as you would expect from any debugger, you can actually go and see the values of your variables. Uh, you can even change them. And you can let it go and, and it will it should change the value that is displayed over here. So this is basically the VS Code Java support. Um, thanks for having me.